All right, this is the solving inequalities uh, section. Solving inequalities is really easy. In the interest of full disclosure, I will say that I shot one of this same topic and then made a multi-step inequalities and then realized that I forgot to include the most important part of this section, so I'm redoing this. You may hear me reference it. it uh, I actually did another one just like this one almost before, but I, I missed the most important part, so what would be the point in anybody sitting there and paying attention to it? So uh, when you solve inequalities, it's just like solving equations except for the last step because we have to add in the component of uh, greater than, less than, or uh, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. So it changes it just a little bit. But the nature of the problems are pretty easy. And by the way, this should really be called solving two-step equations because if you want to see multi-steps, they're in there. I'm going to make another one with distributed property. Uh, now, draw the line. Uh, when I solve equations, I do this system. Draw the line, which means draw a line down the equal sign, or in this case, the inequality. Baby goes bathroom, where you use distributive property. Uh, clean your room. That's where you put all your terms together on the same side of that line. Pork chops and applesauce is a Brady Bunch reference. It deals with uh, putting, uh, if you had a room that you share with a sibling, and you put all your brother's stuff on one side of the room and all your stuff on the other, and there's a tape line down the middle. That's kind of where that's leading to. Parties over is a quick reminder of how to deal with two-step equations, which is kind of where we're headed. And the last step, of course, is finish them, which is the single step. In this case, finish them becomes much more important than it had in the past. So let's just look at one, right? Who cares about the theory? Um, so here's 13 is greater than or equal to 7 plus 3x. So I'm going to draw this line down the middle. Um, the second step would have been baby goes bathroom, but there's no distributive property, so that's out. Uh, determine whether I clean my room or combine like terms on the same side. I just look at the values. If there's only one x term and a number uh, or just one of each type there, I'm good. These are like terms, but they're on different sides of the line. Uh, that would be sort of later steps. Uh, pork chops and applesauce deals with the fact uh, deals with the idea of me having an x over here and another a variable term over here. But I don't have that either. So we're all the way down to on our little list, parties over. Parties over, of course, is a reference to having a party at your house, you being the variable, and then you have two types of people come to that party. You've got friends, and then you've got your friends of friends who other people invite that you don't even really know. Now, when a party's over and it's time for everybody to go home, you could either kick your friends out first, or you can kick those friends of friends out. It's uh, If you keep your friends there, there's a chance they might actually help you clean up, so it's in your best interest to get rid of friends of friends, so that's what we're going to do. In order to get rid of this 7, which is related to this 3x by adding slash subtracting, you don't actually look at this other than to tell you what type of operation you're performing. You look at what's in front of the number. So it's not seen, so we assume it's positive 7, so that's the same as plus 7. In order to get rid of plus 7, I'm going to subtract 7. Because I can't just move 7 over. I have to get rid of it over here and put it over here. These cancel because 7 minus 7 is 0. 13 minus 7 is 6. And now we're at uh, essentially the last step, which is called finish him in most cases. It's usually just a real simple one-step move. I know that three x, the 3 and the x touch each other, so that means that they're multiplying because if hamsters touch, they multiply. It's kind of a thing. So in order to get rid of times 3, I'm going to divide by 3 because 3 divided by 3 is 1, and then you'd have 1x come down to the next line, which is exactly what we want. I have to do the same thing to both sides. 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. 1x is the same as x. You might want to just put x there and just mark that out. That's confusing. Um, here's where finishing differs a little bit if it's an inequality question. In an inequality question, if I am multiplying or dividing, not anything else. If I'm adding or subtracting, this rule does not apply. So just if you're adding or subtracting, just bring it down. If you are multiplying or dividing, you need to look at this number. It's the number you either multiplied by or divided by. If that number is negative, you need to flip this over because you're changing x from a negative to a positive when you do that. Because if it was negative 3x, you would be making it into a positive x. It's almost like you're uh, changing perspective. Like, wherever you are, look at one of the walls. Now turn around 180 degrees and look at the other wall. 
the wall that was originally on your right is now on your left. That's the change in perspective we're talking about. So what used to be less than would have to be greater than. But in this case, we divided by a positive, so we're still facing the same direction. So just keep it. It used to be less than, it's still less than. Less than equal to. Now, the other part is you have to graph it. Go to 2, make your line, circle. Um, it's a less than equal to, so since it's equal to and 2 is included in my answer, i got to fill this in, so 2 is also part of it. And it's x is next to the small end. This is the only thing you focus on when you graph the x. x is on the small end, so x is less. So numbers that are less than 2 would be over here, because that's where like 1 is and uh, 0 and that whole thing. That's how you graph that one. One more. Hopefully I can do it quickly. I'm going to draw a line. Uh, I'm all the way down to parties over. I'm just going to skip to that point. Uh, in this problem, I need to think about that there's an add-subtract relationship here. To get rid of this 10, I don't necessarily look at this number, or I don't at all, look at this and say, oh, it's minus, so I'm going to add 10. No, that will not work. I need to get rid of 10, and it's an add-subtract relationship between this and this. In order to get 0, I need to take 10 minus 10. So I'm doing the opposite operation just so I can get rid of it. Now that 10 doesn't exist. If I added 10, it would be 20. That's not, help that's not helpful. So don't look at this sign behind the number. Only look in front to tell yourself what you need to do. I'm going to bring down this. And 5 minus 10 is negative 5. Now I'm at a point where I'm at the finish him situation. I put this negative with the 2 because I can take what was once minus. It makes that, it, it sort of changes its uh, tone now that I'm at the last step because this relationship between these two numbers is a divide because it's v over 2, so that means v divided by 2. Now, there's nothing to add or subtract to, so this minus has to go somewhere, so we treat it as a negative in this situation. You've got this negative 2 here. I can put it on the 2 or I can put it on the v. I cannot put it on both. If I put it on both, it's a negative divided by a negative, and that would change it to a positive. So I've got to pick one. I'm going to do it to the 2 because then it's less steps. To get rid of divide, I need to multiply because this is the same as negative 1 half v. And in order to get rid of this, I need to multiply by negative 2 because then it would be negative 2 over negative 2, which gives me positive 1. That's kind of where I'm headed with it. So I'm going to multiply this side by negative 2. And I'm going to multiply this side by negative 2 as well. Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. Now, I have to be very careful. I can't just bring this down. I remember now that inequalities require me to look at this number if I'm multiplying or dividing. Well, I'm multiplying, so I need to look. It's negative. So I now I'm facing the other wall. This has to change. It used to be kind of like this, and now I'm going to change it over to this. By the way, the less than equal to thing never changes. It never, it's never going to become this, for instance. It's always going to be, if it starts out with a line under it, it's going to be done with a line under it. To graph, it's real simple. Go to 10 on your little graph. If you have one made, that'd be convenient. Uh, I'm going to circle 10. There's a line under it, so 10 is part of the answer. So I'm going to fill it in. And then I look at V and its relationship. V's on the big end, so V's greater because it's big. And it goes up, and that is it. So remember, only if you multiply or divide in the last step do you flip that inequality. Otherwise, just bring it down.